We are looking at question three on free response three. And in question three, we have a table showing the quantity demanded and quantity supplied of good X. And we can see our prices here. So this is our demand curve right here. So as price goes down, quantity quantity demanded goes goes up so this is our downward sloping pro, uh, demand curve right here and we want to determine the elasticity of good X when price changes from 30 to 20 so when price drops from 30 to 20 what is the price elasticity of demand so I've got it right over here we simply can use our formula and, and just to remind you uh, Elasticity equals the percentage change in quantity over the percentage change in price. In this case, it's the quantity demanded. So we simply compute the percentage change in quantity demanded by subtracting where we started from where we ended up. We started with uh, with one, a unit of one, and ended up with a unit of three with this drop in price. So three minus one over the average of these two divided by where we started, I'm sorry, where we ended up in price minus where we started in price divided by the average and then compute that and you end up with negative 2.5 but we typically express the price elasticity of demand in absolute value so we end up with 2.5 which is well over 1 which is which tells us that the that this is relatively the the uh, the the demand that the demand at this point and at this part of the uh, in this portion of the of the demand curve is relatively elastic well over 1 now we can also look at total revenue the change in the total revenue and if total revenue in in Increases as we lower the price. That tells us that we are on a in the part of the, the demand curve that is elastic. So you can see how what I, I just multiplied price times the quantity and uh, to to get a total of revenue, and, and you can see that it doubles as we lower the price because we uh, tripled our quantity demanded. Okay. So that takes care of part one. Part two is we're looking at the elasticity of supply. Now, we can see right away, let me jump back over here, that the supply curve is vertical. It's stuck in a quantity of a three. So it looks like this. All right, let me get this out, out, of, out of the way for right now. So it looks like this, right? three no matter what the cost is right no matter what the cost is it a three so that is perfectly inelastic now we can also compute the elasticity of supply using our formula right here that, that we, we used up here everything is the the, the the same except we change our quantities they're all going to be three so it's just three minus three over three which is zero and when you have zero in the numerator, it's just zero. And any time the you compute the elasticity to be zero, that's perfectly inelastic. Okay. Um, so that would tell us that it's perfectly inelastic. Okay, perfectly inelastic. All right, now let's go to part three. And we're looking at what would happen if we had a per unit tax imposed on good X. How would the burden of the tax be dis dis distributed between the buyers and the sellers of good X? Well, this is a little bit weird or unique, I guess, since we have a, a vertical supply. So we have a perfectly inelastic supply. So that tax is going to push the cost up to here. And since we can't move off this vertical supply so if, if the tax is this amount right here then that's just going to cause and also uh, remember supply also equals marginal cost uh, equals not plus equals marginal cost so marginal cost is going to go up 
by the amount of the tax. But because we're stuck here, the the only way they're going to continue to sell three is to keep the price right where it is. So the price is going to stay right where it is, but the cost is going to go up. So the sellers are going to have to absorb all of the tax burden. So it's going to all go on the sellers, okay? Because of this vertical or per perfectly inelastic supply. Uh, okay, so that takes care of one, two, and three. Now, part B, we're looking at a, a different good, good Y, that has an income elasticity of a negative, that's important, negative two. And we want to uh, use a, a correctly labeled graph of the market for good Y to show the, the effect of an increase in income of con of consumer income on the equilibrium price of good Y. So we need to understand what this negative right here means. So when we look at the formula for the income elasticity of the demand, it's the, it's the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in income. So if this is negative, like we know it is, it means that these two have to be moving in different directions in order for the whole expression to be negative. One's got to be negative and the other one has to be positive. And we know that income went up. We know that income went up. That's what it states right here. It's an increase in income. So we know that the denominator is positive. So in order for the whole expression to be a negative 2, the numerator, which is the percentage change in quantity demanded, has to be negative or has to be decreasing as the income or the denominator in this expression is increasing. So since that is what is going on, we know that demand for good Y is going to decrease. And since an income, since uh, we see that, then that, since, <laughs> since we see that the effect of an increase in income is that consumers demand less of the good, it means the good is inferior. Because as folks earn more money, they don't want it anymore, which means they only buy it if they're poor or, or you know, have very low, low, low income. So if, if the, if the, the rule here that, that you want to sort of know is that if the income elasticity of demand is negative, then that means that the good is most likely an inferior good. If it's positive, if a change in income, if income, if a rise in income also causes a positive, if they're both positive, if a change in income, uh, if a rise in income causes a rise in quantity of demand, it, that it tells us that is it is that good Y would be a normal, a normal good, a normal good. But it's not, it's, it's a negative, so it's in Inferior good, and the graph you want to draw to, to actually get to the answer should just simply be a supply and a demand uh, a graph for good Y, showing the demand curve shifting to the left so that you have a lower quantity of demand and, and supply as a result of the rise in income. So you have a uh, shift in the demand curve to the left and a decrease in price and quantity. So, and, and so we would, actually we would, let me just grab my guy right here. So we, we have an, a lower equilibrium price, a lower equilibrium price and quantity. So we're going from here so we have a shift in the demand and a movement along the supply or the marginal uh, cost curve to here. Okay. So that takes care of question three.
I believe. But yes, it does. Okay.